Hello, this Wait. is this is Ellen Mongan with my husband assisting me in electronics. Isn't that great? You got the CT <laughs> compat today. We are out of town today, so we've had a few technical difficulties, but we're going to have a great show. This is Wow Mom, host Ellen Mongan, my co host. I'm going to introduce in a minute, but I just want to say today the show is about hope. See, hope makes your faith float. It's like it's like a very important part of the walk with Jesus. So we're talking about hope, and here's my hopeful friend, Jane Ann, who hopes, <laughs> has, puts hope ahead of everything else each day with her faith. Faith, hope, and love remain. That's all. So we let's, let's practice our hope today. Hey, Jane Ann. Hey, good morning. I'm hopeful? doing great. <laughs> I am very hopeful. Very I'm hopeful. Too. I'm too. How was your weekend? It was great. But yours looks like you had a lot more fun than me. <laughs> We have been in every state, you know, because we've been trying to reconnect after this staycation. And so, you know, Jay and I talk a lot about large families. And one thing we learned in a large family that as they get older, all adults, almost all married and with children, that you have to find some new traditions to make. And so one of the things we do is each year for Christmas, instead of, you know, buying them gifts and well, we do give money, but we also give a little trip where everyone gets together. And this year, we decided to ask Amanda and Kyle to host us in Kentucky at their home. Now, we used to go to the beach, but this was a ton of fun. We even did Family Olympics, which you probably saw some of the pictures. They were hilarious. So, Dan, you have your crooked family growing. She's got the old kids and the middle and the young. So what do you do for some t traditions? Do you have anything yet that you've been doing? You've been doing a lot of pool time. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of pool time, but we also have a tradition. We go to my parents' house who live on the lake, and we always celebrate like Father's Day. There's a lot of birthdays in June, so we celebrate like a lot of birthdays, Father's Day. And uh, anyway, so we just have a really good time on the water. That's one of our traditions that we've kind of started. So, And then Christmas time, we just get together as our family, you know, because as a large family, you know, people start scattering and moving, and you have them all across the country. And the world. I don't and, the world. <laughs> and the world. Yeah, yeah, Jap Japan and Hawaii. So I don't have that yet. And so anyway, we all do get together pretty, you know, pretty much, pretty regular, pretty regular, as a matter of fact. And you know, I found with large families, I'm not saying that it's every family that's large or every family that's small is not like this. The siblings are very tight. They all love each other. We yes. usually hop to go in bed early. So we have time, they have sibling time. And I mean, the fun they have, Jan, that we miss, we don't care. We just have no fun. But we love large families, but we, you know, raising them in the young days is very much a work of physical, mm -hmm. I'm accurate, a physical work. But in the older age, it's a lot of emotional work. You have to kind of be there for yes. everybody and weigh it out. You have to be sure that everybody feels that you love them best. <laughs> yes, you're so right. That is, you're so right. It really does. Because I'm still in the middle. I'm like, I, our oldest is 26. And then we go all the way to eight. So um, yeah, I got quite the, quite the gamut. <laughs> my favorite part, Jane Ann, is also watching the different relationships, how one child, you know, needs a diaper change and another child takes someone's child and changes that baby. That's love. And then one child's crying and they care to their mother or, you know, we have grandchildren that are teens already. And so watching the teens all get their little inner circle over the babies. Okay. We did, we did the Olympics, Jane Ann. And my team was all the people that don't get mad at me. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I didn't have the competitive. I mean, they all wanted to win. I'm going to tell you that. But they, I said, I got, at one point, Jay Ann Tyler, my oldest son, had to like, I fell down on the three legged race. I was praying I didn't break a leg. And he like lifted me up. And I was like, I was so glad we had a, like a bonding inner circle. There were six teams of five. You know, it's a lot of people. So uh -huh. we were the second place. I don't want to brag. We didn't win. <laughs> so we should go on the show, Jay. You want to start off on hope? I mean, hope is amazing. Do yeah, I, I do. I, I do. I do. I want. I have one scripture that really stands out to me, and that's Romans. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna read it right quick. Okay. It's it's Romans fifteen thirteen, and it says, "May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit." Wow, that is a very powerful verse, and uh, right there. I mean, in our times, we definitely live in times where we have to have hope in something. So we have our hope in our faith, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. So right there, you know, our hope, our hope, that, that's our hope right there. Well, I, I was, um, when I was very young in the Lord, I used to get a lot of songs and prayers. And one was like, I'm a hoping and I'm praying that God will be coming anytime down the road. 
Well, we know that it says the time of the season, you know, not, but the day and the, uh, the day and hour, you know, not but the time of the season, you will know. So like, I'm going to just encourage Christians around the country to kind of open your eyes. And, you know, there's that song that, um, that goes like this, be prepared. We also don't know what day we will die. So we have to always right. be prepared. Hope tells you that God is coming. Hope tells you that he's real. But, you know, I was thinking a lot about hope, Jane Ann. And I was thinking about when we when we meet the Lord, then we, you know, we get to know him and we begin to, to, to believe so that when, when things get dark in our life or maybe we go through a trial, we have that hope to bring us through. And so I thought it might be good to tell a short mini testimony, even though we've done it before. And I'll let you go first of how we met the Lord. Because my scripture is different. My scripture is Peter. And why was he able to walk on the water? Because he knew Christ and he knew Christ's voice. He knew it was him. He knew he'd hold him up. He wasn't going to drown because Jesus was going to walk on that water and save him and carry him to say, sure. So what was, when you met the Lord, Jen, I know it's stages of like feeling that, wow, he's got my back and he's going to be there and he's going to pick me up just like Tyler picked me up off the, off the grass when I fell. You know what I'm saying? So, right. Jen, what's okay. your testimony? I'm sure uh, Okay, great. I would love to say it. Okay, so I just want to start off by saying that um, when I got married, I was 26 years old, my husband and I, and um, we got married in Las Vegas. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> Las Vegas, and we were married at Bally's Casino. So you know what? <laughs> There's hope for everybody out there. So anyway, we, we uh, got married. And then quickly, um, quickly, when we were married, you know, coming together, you know, as as you just have a lot of differences. And my husband was 32. I was 26. And um, anyway, so we had a lot of, a lot of big fights. And um, there was just one day that I just remember. Um, oh, and to take that back, I did grow up in a Christian home, but this was a moment when I came to know Jesus Christ as, as my savior in a real tangible way is what I want to say. But I did grow up in a Christian home and things like that. But anyway, so going back, so we had a lot of fights. So I remember the day, clearly I was in Panama city beach, Florida. We didn't live far from there. And my parents had a condominium and I was, I was pregnant with our first child and I was by myself at the condo. And I just remember crying out to the Lord because there was a lot of emotional things going on with me. I was newly married. I was very pregnant and of course, all the motions that come with pregnancy uh, that we know. And uh, I, I just was like, I, I, what have I gotten into? <laughs> I don't know where to turn, Lord. I'm like, I'm married, I'm pregnant, and like I'm having all these fights with my husband. This is not, this is not what I expected marriage to be. And uh, I just remember really crying out that day, that day on, on the beach, just right there, and just saying, God, you know, I know you're real. I just need for you to help me and, and this day right now. And I just remember it distinctly. And from that day forward, really, he just began, I, I guess maybe I allowed him to, to change me. And that's really when it happened. So I was 26 and that was, that was one part of my journey when I clearly remember that's right. that, that I gave, that really it gave me hope. And it was just like an infusion into my spirit, into my brain, into my body physically. And from that day forward, I just began to walk out and I began to, that God just began putting things in my path, like how to be married and what did marriage mean and that it's a sacrament and, and just a lot of things begin to happen. So that's, that's, that's when, that's one distinct moment I can remember in my journey. And I like the word that's a journey, you know, because the journey, it is a, it is a journey. It's not like one step, you know, I'm sure that Peter, when he stepped on that water, Jenny thought, this is great. The rest of my life, I'll be walking on that water with Jesus. But that's not how it is, is it? There's a journey that sometimes it's up and you're high on the Lord going, Lord, you're so awesome. And other times you're like, where'd you go? Yep. <laughs> you know, yep. We're just like on a journey. It's like first, you know, everyone meets Jesus at different stages in their life. I was a young girl when I met the Lord at seven in the Eucharist because I didn't want to be not liked, not popular. I didn't tell many people. I first thought that everyone knew Jesus that was Catholic. You know, they met Jesus in the Eucharist and he was real. It wasn't how it was. So by the time I got smart in high school, I knew to guard my tongue in the wrong way though. I want to be right. popular more than I wanted to say Jesus is the best friend I ever had. So I closed my mouth and I got to meet a lot of people and I had a lot of boyfriends and I didn't have that many girlfriends, Jane, because I did have one special friend because she was a godly woman. She actually 
was a, a granddaughter of Dr. Hildebrand from Chicago, a famous pastor that was on TV. So her and I clung together as friends because we could talk about the Lord and still be popular. But then when I when I left high school, I went to college and it was such a disaster for me with all the way the world had gone. That Catholic mm. school girl seeing that people were doing drugs, drinking and sex. I didn't even know what sex was. So I was 16. So I was like, oh, my Lord. So by that time, I fell away for a little bit went to be a stewardess, even though I was thinking this is bad, I was still not an angel. I wasn't drugs, drinking, and sex. I wasn't an angel either. And I went off to be a stewardess. And that's when I began to search. And I met the man of my dreams, of course, Patrick. And we had the opposite thing. We didn't argue at all. We were young, Mary. I was like, so deliriously like, God, he's so good. I just had him on a pedestal. We waited a while. <laughs> but everyone has to argue in, in, in life. Otherwise, you're a robot. And so then I had a dream one day before I married Pat. I dreamed that I was baking cookies and in the bowl was the face of Jesus. And the bowl said to me, I am the way and the truth and life. The face of Jesus spoke to me. And that was in the scripture. But being a Catholic school girl, I never read the scripture. I guess I didn't pay attention during the mass when it's being read. And so guess what? I went to um, Pat's brother, who was a Christian. He said that you need to find some charismatics because he was a Protestant. He knew the Catholics were coming alive in a new way, just like Acts, the book of Acts. And I did that. And I found some people in Gainesville, Florida. And Jeannie Roach, she's a speaker now, and she was instrumental in leading me to give my heart to Jesus. But it was really in my own bedroom, Jan, by myself, because I wasn't going to trust these charismatic people. Are they really Protestant or Catholic? You know, so I said, yeah. Jesus, here I am. And I, I just want you to open my eyes. And just like Paul, I felt the Lord open my eyes. I felt the presence of the Holy Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, which mm -hmm. I didn't ever feel before, even though I was a Catholic schoolgirl walking to Mass, loving Jesus. I felt the Lord come on me. There was right. no doubt. It was for one year, Jane, and I felt the presence of God. I thought that's how we all walk. Like every day, it's just like every day with you, Lord. But it wasn't yeah. like that either. We walk a regular walk, just like marriage. Some days are better than others. So I wanted to preface that with I learned God's voice. And you know how I did that, Jane? I got in the Word. I read the Bible and I would read it until something popped out, like, woo. That's my scripture. Like today when you prayed, part of that scripture came out at me. And I'll tell you later when you reread it, what power, because now I'm going blank because we had a hard time with technical difficulty. <laughs> when something pops out at you, that's your word for the day. That's your like gift from Jesus. It may be like, mm -hmm. I love you. It may be like, I'm correcting you. <laughs> Whatever it is, you take that home in your heart and then you walk with it all day. Now that word may not be for you. It's not going to go forth void. You may meet someone down through the day that needs a little hope. And then yeah. you give that word to them as a present. You know, I was reading the word today and it said this, I think it's for you. It may not be though. I always preface it with like, take it to prayer though. I know it was for me. <laughs> it's always for me because I'm in there looking, where are you God? So yeah. that's how I learned to hear his voice. Like Peter heard it by walking side by side. And that's how I learned it in my own prayer time by myself. I didn't go to other meetings to hear him. I went to other meetings to confirm what I already knew in my heart he had said to me. Because if you go with to and fro, you know, past to and fro, you get confused. If you ask four or five people, what is the Lord saying? You get confused. Right. You just have to know his voice for yourself. Like Peter, mm -hmm. then you're the one that walks in the water. What do you think, Jane? <laughs> That's right. Right. Well, and I know scripture says that the, um, and this is important in our times too, that people have discernment and they, you know, and they hear the voice of the Lord, but it says the, the, uh, my sheep hear my voice and the, and they'll run from the voice of the enemy. So God already promises us that. So that's, that gives us hope right there. But I was just going to ask you, so when you had your experience, okay. so it gave you hope, right? Yeah, I mean, I it, it, like it just, <laughs> yeah. I, think that, my faith. I really do think aligning your faith does not mean you're not, you're not still walking the same you were as a little girl, Catholic school girl. It alivened it. That seed of faith goes in at baptism, communion, confirmation. But then it alivens. At some point, you got to say, I'm not being coming a Catholic, following the Lord in the faith because my mom and dad told me to or the nuns. I'm making a decision. And that's right. conversion, Jan. To me, it's conversion. If there's no conversion, some people say, well, I don't really have a testimony. Oh, but you do. Everyone has a testimony. The testimony yeah. is when your faith comes alive. It's deposited yeah. like a present under the tree. And you yes, come here, right. I got you this present. If I don't open the present, I don't know what's inside. What do you think? Right. Absolutely. And I think that we all like, and, and it happens in, in our journey on life because our salvation starts 
now. It's, it's right here and right now. And I just also want to speak to people who may be listening and just say, you know, if you've not had that experience, just right where you are, just cry out to the Lord because he's, he's waiting right there for you and just say, please, you know, whatever it is, if it's the fear that you have with what's going on and you're, you have children or maybe you're a single mom or maybe you've lost a husband or maybe you've lost a child, it, it could be anything you're going through, you know, and just cry out because I think that's where I know that with you, from what we're saying, Ellen, is that it started at a point when we were like, okay, this is beyond me. I have no, I'm out, I'm, I've exhausted all of my natural resources. I can't do it on my own. I can't do it on my own. And so the, the faith that was deposited in me as a child, so that scripture that says they'll, you know, train them up in the way of the Lord and they will, you know, they will stay with it. It's so true. I mean, you know, and so I had remembered everything my parents had taught me and it was just like, okay, Lord, I have not here, here I am, you know? And so at that moment, God did infuse me with, with hope, which then did increase my faith. Because then when you walk through things, you realize God does have your back. The word is true. He is true. And that builds your faith. I think even more. Yes, so I, I hope that, well, so yeah, go ahead. Again. You go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, that's okay. So I think that just with today's, with what's going on, right. I think God's really building faith in his people right. and, and bringing people, you know, and bringing people on because as I've just been studying the scriptures the past couple of days, because I've been having to find some scripture for some specific situations in my life. And I've been reading the word salvation just keeps okay popping out at me. I went through Romans, through Ephesians, through first and second Peter. And our salvation is we have to walk it out daily. Right. It is clearly walking it out daily. And that is having faith and putting our hope in things above and not things here on this earth. And I think this is a time specifically. And we don't usually just quote, sit around and quote scripture, Jay and I, because we both are walking close to the Lord and we know it in our soul. But um, faith is the confident assurance that something you hope for is going to happen. See, you're, when you're, you don't need, you have yep. faith in your heart. And then when you go through a disaster or a trial, or this is really hard and you wail to the Lord, that's when you need to cling to your hope. See, hope isn't as easy yep. as faith. Faith is a gift and hope is actually an action. Like you have to remember when, right? Like you remember when, and I thought of three scriptures. Today is the day of salvation. Okay. And eternal life is this. What is it? Knowing Christ Jesus, your Lord. I debate this with a lot of people. What is eternal life? It begins when you know Christ. He's guiding you. He's like a daddy that when you're a baby, he holds you. You know, he carries you along. And then when you get bigger, at two maybe, and you're walking yeah. along, he'll hold your hand. And then when you get older, he expects you to walk. He right. expect to walk on the water that first day. Like, I know Jesus is real now. I feel his presence. Well, then walk on the water. I'm going to drown. <laughs> but we grow into it. Faith is deposited in our soul, and then hope becomes what we depend on. Confidence, assurance, that's that good. hope for is going to happen. So I wrote down some interesting things, Jan. Did you see them? I don't know if you read the show notes all, but I write so sloppy and I type so bad. But Jan still does read them for me. But um, I'm saying this. There are times in hope that Jesus is still there. He's still holding you like when you're a baby. He's still holding your hand like when you're two. But you have to depend on some things to remember when. So I was going to mention some, Jan. You want to go first on that list or you want me to go first? No, you go. You can go ahead and go first. My favorite one, and this is a friend of mine, Judy Savosky. She made a faithless shelf in her home. And I still wanted to have one. I go, I want one of those too. You know, you get someone has something and you want it, like maybe a brand new tea. Oh, yeah, well, I yeah. I want a faithless shelf. And what I, she did on it was she took all the different ways that Jesus had done things in her life. So maybe that, like on my faithless shelf, I have three people I prayed for a baby. And so I have the little baby and the, it says on the, the little shelf of the three babies. So these, these children are older now. The baby that you prayed for. And every time I look, I remember how I wrought in prayer for these women. How I went to, to, this, to um, a place and just knelt and prayed and wailed for them. And then another one may be like I was a stewardess. I was too short. I was too young. I was too everything, you know, and I became a flight attendant for Air Florida on that shelf. And the reason I mentioned this, Jan, to give you for hope's sake, you know, for what we're talking about is one day I was in my bathroom putting on my makeup before I left. Now, I'm not great at makeup and there's usually a mirror and I can't see because I'm blind. And I was putting it on. But in that particular house, I had the faithless shelf in my bathroom. And in the back, I was praying with my prayer partner, Judy Hartney, in the back of my 
head, I could see the faith in the shelf. I began to cry. I go, God is so good to me, Judy. I can't believe how good he's been to me. And I want to break out in song. Oh, the Lord is good to me. But I didn't because I knew that it was just a moment that I said, wow, somebody think, where has God been? But on that faithfulness shelf, if you have one, you could just peer at it and you see God has been good to me from the time I met him when I was seven years old in the Eucharist to who I am now at 66 years old. And so we thank the Lord each time. And then some we forget. We forget. So we don't journal or have a faith in the shelf. That'll remind you those two things. What do you use when you need hope, Jane Ann? Um, yes, I have. Um, mine is more of a journal. Okay. But I do want to start that shelf. I do want to start the, the faith shelf. I just have uh, so much, uh, so many people in my house right now that I have room for. <laughs> they were they were <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I keep a journal. And then um, a lot of times when I write out my prayers, I will go back and look to see, I mean, all that's been answered and I'll just write, praise the Lord, you know, by the, by the prayer. So that's kind of one, you know, one of my things, but just watching my children and um, then my husband and I growing in our marriage and strengthening that, that right there, just, it brings tears to my eyes because I'm like, we have homeschooled for a long time and we've not done the traditional school. And just to see how God has so brought my children to, to where they are today, you know, my older ones, it's just, I, I'm like, you. Yeah, I want to break out in a song. I'm just, it gives me such a grateful heart. And then also just uh, the, you know, just seeing the things, how um, our boys, you know, have survived a couple of really bad accidents and walked away. You just, you know, miracles. that's miracles. Yeah. I've had several, a lot of miracles in my life. So you have, yeah. one day we should do a show about your boy, your, your man. Now he's an older man yeah. but being <laughs> about him. And his, his, um, his, just a whole show about encouragement. We used to do one on miscarriage matters. Do you remember? It was like, it was like yes. resilience, resilience. We should do that show too. But, um, I want to say too, if you don't have a network of caring women, a network of people that you could depend on, like a little circle of love, please try to get one. <laughs> like you can't buy yes. it at the store. They're not going to give it to you for Christmas in that little box, a gift that you didn't open. But you start praying. I just spoke to my one granddaughter and she's a believer. So of course, she says it out loud, some things, and she's not the most, like she's little. So she's like, maybe, I don't know, almost eighth grade. And so she, she, she has people that she said, maybe she looks like she's a believer. You know, people, we have this persecution involved. So I said, you need to pray for one special friend, one that will not, that loves the Lord too, and won't judge you and that will love you no matter what. It's important. Right. So right now yes. is the time, ladies. You have to know who has your back. You yes. have to know who you could trust. There are friends that are friends, and then there are friends that are like a sister in Christ or a brother in Christ. You have to have a friend that doesn't smile at you. And then behind your back, go blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Blah, right. Blah, blah. You have to have those people right now. We have to have them. And I think I want to encourage too, that you have to find a spiritual director or mentor. Why? Because there's going to be a lot thrown at us at once coming soon. Mm -hmm. Things are going to be really, really different. You don't have to believe us. You can just read the news, hear the paper, talk <laughs> to a friend. Things are happening. The world is changing. Right. The, the dark is getting darker, but the light's getting brighter. It's getting mm -hmm. brighter, Jan, don't you think? It's brightening. Oh, absolutely. Brighter. Absolutely. Brighter. Yep. This is the time. I mean, not, well, the kingdom of heaven is at hand all That's the right. time. That's right. So, uh, you know, carry the kingdom in your heart, in your mind, in your mouth, and in, in the way we act, the way we speak, because a lot, everybody's, you know, everybody that you speak with, because like you said, it is becoming darker, but the light is becoming lighter. So people will begin to see the difference oh, in the way so we true. act and the way we speak and things like that. And, you know, we so, have the mask on, Jane Ann. So our priest was saying one time, you can't see a smile, but you all really, it's very hard to read a person with the mask on. I'm mm -hmm. sincere. I look at eyes. I look at body language. Um, who can we trust? See, we know we could trust God. So we know we could trust the word of God. We know we could trust the faith. So we have to be very much prayerful and in the word. You know, there was this, there was, a, um, there was a prophet. One of my favorite prophets, Jan, was Samuel. And he was a young boy. He did, you know the story I know, but yes. he was a young boy. He did not know the um, voice of God. In those days, he didn't speak a lot to his people. Now he speaks to us through, uh, you know, through the th three ways, the word and through others. And there's many ways he speaks. He's always talking. I go, he talks more than I do. If you're looking <laughs> and your eyes are open, you could hear him. But right. he didn't know his voice. And he heard this in his bed, Samuel, Samuel. He was staying with the priest, Eli. He ran to Eli. I heard a voice say, Sam, was it you? 
No, it wasn't me. Go back to bed. By the third time, Sam caught on like us with trying to get on the air today. <laughs> so oh, yeah. go and he goes like, this is the Lord. That's the Lord. When he speaks next time, say, speak, Lord, your, your servant is listening. So I encourage you women, the younger women, especially that are new in the Lord, if they are new at even the Catholic faith or new at, new at reading the Bible or new at anything of God, get under someone that can tell you if it's the Lord or not. And then as you get older, yes. you know to get the confirmation from the people instead of just like tell you, what do I do? Well, what's the Lord saying to you? It's different as you get older. But in the beginning, I remember Jane and I had this mentor, Jeannie Rhodes. She was amazing for me. And I right away after I you know, gave my heart to the Lord totally and became immersed in the faith and met all that I did. Then I had I move away to Utah of all places where I thought, you know, God is <laughs> everywhere, but is he in Utah? Well, he was. And I would actually hear <laughs> things that Jeannie had said to me in my mind, in her voice, kind of like, not like hearing a voice, <laughs> like the, a thought would, I need an answer and it would come to me, you know, because when you hear a priest give a homily and that, or a pastor of any kind, then you, you go, wow, that was for me. It comes mm -hmm. back to you when you need it. Right. It's just deposit in your soul. I say to the moms, deposit the word of God in the souls of the children. Right. You know, right. So I know Jan does that daily because I thought, you know, I thought <laughs> I got that confusion one time. So what do you think about that? Don't you think having the word hidden in your heart, thy word have I hidden my heart that I'm right. against you. Otherwise, the world is the world's showing is TV and radio and different things. And we maybe could get confused and say, well, that's it. Well, it may not be it. How do you encourage your children to stay on the path, Janet, of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost? Well, we do it several ways. Um, you know, daily, um, we just, uh, we, we do it pretty much most, most, most days. Um, we do a, a daily devotion. We read the scripture reading for the day, and then we just have a set of prayers that we do. And then also we um, do do mass on Sundays. And then the girls and I, because we're the ones home, the boys are working. But right now we have it as a routine where we go to mass on Wednesdays. Um, so that's, those are some ways. And then just as a parent, I just try to be intentional and in looking for ways to teach in the times that we make mistakes and, and, to, and to lead our children that way also. And then I do, we are memorizing some scripture. I'm, I hadn't, I've kind of we are. We're memorizing scripture. I'm not. Sometimes I fall away from that, but I know that we have to hide the word in our hearts so the girls can at least have it when they when they need it, or or even with our boys, you know. In fact, it was funny because we were at my daughter's house swimming, and um, I, we have our I have a grandson too, and so they were all playing in the water, and Joseph was like, "Mom, what are are you are they watching Veggie Tales? <laughs> you know, which is a Christian program." And I was thinking, gosh, weird. no, I mean, I, my kids grew up on like, hide the, there's a CD, it was called Hide the Word in Your Heart. And it mm -hmm. was a, a Christian singer. It was a guy, I can't remember his name. Anyway, and I would play that during the day, like when we homeschooled and things like that. And, you know, now with it, when CDs aren't, you know, you really don't have CDs, everything's on the computer or <laughs> YouTube or, you know, now I think it's totally changed. But I thought, you know, I, need, I do need to get back to that a little bit. Not that I only have I only have like two that would be interested in VeggieTales at this point. But anyway, just trying to find resources. I think as a parent, we need to be intentional on finding resources that will help our children. And we have there's a plethora of resources these days with all the technology, but we have to find what's going to be truth and not heresy and, and point them into the, in the direction. So that was kind of a long answer to your question. No, no I loved it. I would say, I didn't even know there was no more CDs. <laughs> well, I like, Oh, well, I learned something new every day. And it's always on the show that we learn from each other. We stir the faith. Jan, I love to go on the yes. show because we know how to teach you, but we're learning from each other. I was uh -huh. thinking about a funny experience. Jan, you always share funny experiences. Then we'll go on to the scripture characters that, actually had to have faith, hope in Christ. You know, they had to know his voice enough to get through their hard thing. But I was thinking about this week on the beach trip, what you call it. It's a beach trip. But it really was in Kentucky, just at, at their home. And um, the girls always try to help me out because, you know, I'm like the, I'm not like the regular mother that's telling the kids what to do because I'm older and they're, they're my age in my mind. I think, well, I said, tell, I think in my mind, you're my age. And he said, oh, right. I'm Sean's age. who's 20 years old. <laughs> so that's, that's so funny. Care, so, but I, they're trying to get me. I do not swim. And thank 
God that I have never drowned because I love water and I go in the water. I don't swim. So one girl tries to help me out. I cannot remember which one. Here, mom, try this floaty. It's like a diaper. I never had a floaty that goes like a diaper. You probably know it, Jane, because you're modern. And I go, okay, I try it. I lean on the thing. I lean back. I start to drown. I get off that one. Here, try this one. It's like a seat. <laughs> I try the next float. I'm trying to get my hope to float. You know what I'm saying? So I get on the thing and I lean back and I can't, you know, drink my, my drink. And it's on the thing and I'm drowning. And then I say, okay. Then they blew up one little, I think it was a daughter-in-law, blew up a little tubey and put that around me. And I was okay because it was familiar to me. That's what we're talking about. Hope. You have to find what makes you float. You know what I'm like, yeah. During a crisis, there's going to be crises. I'm not saying that all things are crises. But you have to find what, when you have, when you have a trial come your way, it knocks on the door, knock, knock. Here I am. I am a trial and you open it. Well, a lot of people say, let Jesus open the door. I love that. Yep. I'm not answering it. But if there are times he makes you walk, I will, you will walk the, to the um, fire, but you will not get burned. It's, mm -hmm. it's very important to know what to do during that time, which, which float, what's going to make your hope float. I'm going to give you a word to the wise though, Jan, at the time when you're down and you're drowning, you're three fingers up. You don't call upon your friends that are exhortators. Those are good when you're flying good and they're, they're trying to get you to come down from like pride or something. The one you're down and you're really humble before the Lord, you need the encouragers to lift you up. You just do. A Barnabas or two. This is why Paul hung with Barnabas. He's like going, I'm doing so good. And, the, and Barnabas is going, great job, Paul. Great job. You know, you need those during a, a trial because that's important. The exhortators are very good. I have one in my life, a very favorite friend, and I appreciate it so much. But if you're already down, it's like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I remember when one of my daughters went down and I wrote the kids a letter and I said, this is not the time to throw stones. She was going through a crisis in her life. This is not the time to throw stones. You could be mm -hmm. the next person in the pit. You just stand by your sister. I'm glad I wrote that letter. I never know who reads my letters, Jan. Sometimes I just make fun of mom, but I'm going to tell you this. If your mom writes your letter, any mom, it takes a lot of thought and prayer to write that. Mm -hmm. At least read the letter, tuck it away for later and that my kids are tight right now jan thank the lord they all have each other's back no one's like competition they're older you know, right. 46 i think down or 45 down to 28 i just found out he was 28 i thought he was 27 the baby boy here we go jan so when you have when hope goes out the window you have to what do you do to get back up you gotta have something your your life ring you gotta go i'm drowning here my husband's a, a life he always goes like this the best is yet to come, honey. I go, yeah. The best is yet to come. That's good. That's encouragement. Um, yeah, I I look for it. Okay. I'm like either I, so, I get in the word and I ask, yeah, I ask the Lord, Lord, please, you know, I'll ask. <laughs> you have not because you ask not. I love <laughs> like, that. No, I, Lord, I do that too. I Jan. Need, yeah, I'm like I, I need encouragement today. I encouragement right this minute because you know if whether you've gotten a word from a family member or just our child maybe said something because you know sometimes when you're in your your older children they can say things and it can like hurt you know so i i, I will ask for it because like god that. says you know to come to his throne with you know, great mm -hmm. expectation you know confidence that's in hebrews i like I come to the th throne room boldly to receive in my time of despair. Right, so right. I will, I will just ask and God is so faithful. It will come. I mean, it may come through a friend. It may come through a person on the street. It may come through being at mass and hearing a message or come through the word. I don't know. God, I just like, you know, it may, but I will ask. I do ask. And that's, that's on a regular. <laughs> that's why I say that faithfulness shall I remember when. When uh -huh. you go down, you have to remember when God was faithful in the past to be faithful in the future. You know, we were picking out some scripture characters. I always call them characters because to me, they were a ton of personality. And we have, yep. we have Peter, we said already, that walked in the water. But then there was like there was like a man, I mean, who y'all really familiar with, Abraham. Like that was, mm -hmm. that's a, that was one that takes hope beyond hope. It was, he said, he felt like God told him to kill his son. Now, God would not do that in this, those these days. So now you're listening. That was just God for Abraham. He's called the father of our faith. He was having to walk in faith. But what it says in the scripture is that Abraham knew that God would raise him from the dead. I thought that was interesting. See, he already knew in his mind. I have the hope to know this is not going to go wrong. Because <laughs> I'm right. going to stuff for the good. And he didn't have to do it. You know, I, I, I always mention that Saint, Saint Thelka. She, wanted, she was being martyred for Christ. She's a very first American martyr, at least in one of my Bibles. It may have changed to said. But anyways, they, Delka. And she, she, they tried to burn her. She didn't burn. They tried to, to, um, to take her head off. It didn't come off. You know, it's like everything they tried. She's still considered a martyr. She was willing. We have to be willing to walk it with God. 
Now, why? He's trying to, to if things are happening in our life and he, he knows what he's doing. I was like this. I don't go like, I rebuke Satan right away. I go like this. God has this one. What are you doing? I try to seek him like you do in the word and say, what is going on, Lord? Am I supposed to be patient and just say, I patiently bear with this? Am I supposed to offer it up? Am I supposed mm -hmm. to get rid of it? Have someone pray for me. What am I supposed to do? It's good. That's what it's good to hear the Lord's voice. Like we've been talking about. That gives you hope to know what to do next. So right. I'm going to put on you right here. I don't know what this is, but I'm going to put you on, Jan, to say, um, what do you think about Abraham? That would take a lot of faith hope. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because it went against, you know, I mean, it went against what God had been teaching him. And think about this. Abraham didn't have a book. He didn't have anything to That's go right by. There. He was like right called out. You know, he was like, okay, I'll go, Lord. You know, he <laughs> left his home and everything. And I think about that often. I was like, wow. And, you know, he just... He, he didn't have anything like we have today. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the word of God. We have, we have mass. We have the sacraments. I mean, which mass is part of the sacraments. But I was like, so I want to just read one more scripture because I had two scriptures that were on my, on my heart today. And I read this one and this really spoke to me about kind of uh, what we need to do. Uh, and it says, uh, this is out of first Peter one and it's um, verse 13 and it says, so prepare your minds for action Amen. and, and exercise self-control, put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. And then 14 says, so you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You don't know that you, that your own desires that you didn't know, like when you were, you know, when before your conversion, I just want to say that had the word hope in there, but I like the very first line when it says, so prepare your minds for action. That's right. And that's your soul. Your soul is your, that's part of your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And I'm glad you brought that point, Jan, because to me, you can't just pray always. You pray, Mm -hmm. and you listen and you seek and then you go forth. You know, you gotta do yeah. all those things. Like, right. It's like, Lord, please give me a job. Okay, go look. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Put a resume I'm together. Saying, that's so <laughs> important. It's an action word. But mm. but when we're babies, again, he carries us, right? James right, pray, right. something big happens, and go like, Oh, God loves me best. He yeah. loves me so much. How can I pray? This is what you and then they, then we we're always telling the the other people that are old in the Lord, all you do is pray. Well, yeah, when you're a baby, it's gonna carry you and you pray. And then when you're older, right. it's gonna be you have to pray and then listen carefully for his voice. Line it up with the word and with your faith, and then then go forth and do what he tells you. What did the blessed mother say to us? She's like, um, men, we need a uh, blessed mother, we need some more wine, the world of wine. Well, you go and you take those jars. You yeah. go and you fill them up. You go and you carry those heavy jars to my son, Jesus. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to work it out. He's going to do something. Right. Not, I don't think Blessed Mother knew what he's going to do. She just knew that she would work it out. He's going to fix it. But they had to go forth and do. So mm -hmm. do whatever he tells right. you. It's very important, the Blessed Mother's word for this day. God doesn't mm -hmm. want us to be zombies walking around going, I praise you, Jesus. It's not like that. We have to do what he tells us after we seek his face. And the wailing you said, Jan, too. Like there's no one that wailed more than Hannah for that baby. She wailed. I was just thinking Lord. about you know that. that means. She was desperate. If you don't give me a baby, I won't have one, Lord. I mean, it, it really is important. Those those three points, Jen. Don't you think to do something? You have to do something. Right. Well, because God wants us. And I think I heard this message. I don't remember exactly who, but I was uh, listening to a message. It might have been um, Father Ripperger. But anyway, he wants us to uh, that same scripture, the right. same story about our blessed mother and the wine. He wants us to be a part of his work. That's and so. Right. They had to go fill up the jars, you know, uh, the, the breaking of the bread and the blood, you know, the food when there was what, two, two fish or five loaves and two fish. Um, okay. So they had to pass it out. They had, I mean, they had to partake in that, you know, when Jesus came, I mean, so he wants us to partake in all of this. That's so that, that, that does require action. So, in, <laughs> you know, when it says to prepare our minds, you know, that, that is, and then, and then for action. So I don't know if that, that really is a good, that really is a good, a good word because then it says, then once you do that, put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you. Amen. So that tells you we have to, 
we have to exercise something. <laughs> to think, we have to do something. <laughs> I mean, we have to believe, you know, put our hope in the Lord, um, you know, and we always will have something come in a day that we will have to do that. So if you pray, be expecting that whatever you're praying, it will come some way. And then when you were talking about the, you know, you pray and ask the Lord, what should I do in this situation? Because like, if you have a tornado versus a hurricane, That's right. you're going to have to have That's a important. different, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Um, exactly. Or, an earthquake, or an earthquake, you have to do it, take different measures that's for each right. one of those storms. So that, that's what, you know, the Lord will begin to show you or put people in your path to help you, you know, um, to, to figure those things out as well. We're going we're gonna, to, I'm going to put that's one more story out there, Jane. I like the stories. I tell stories. I'm a storyteller. So it was Jane Ann. And many priests have learned the art of storytelling. That's what Jesus uh-huh. did. And that helps us stay. We were climbing some kind of mountain. I think it was called Chimney Rock. Jane, you're probably really familiar with it. Chimney Rock. And um, the, we get to the very top, which is a small miracle. I'm 66, past 73. We're with these athletes. Tyler's like a superhero. And, and his wife is from Japan. She's teeny. She doesn't have much to get up there. She's amazing. And here we are. We're on the the top of the mountain and I'm going, I made, I'm like this kid. <laughs> <Damn, exercise laughs> asthma. This little baby girl, there was three children. Now she was the oldest child, a little baby and a little sister, you know, the boy baby, the sister, then her, she was not only crying, her eyes were red and she was weeping. I mean, Jan, she was weeping and the Lord, if I would, if she knew Jesus, because the parents were going, you're fine. You're fine. She wasn't fine. I hope I'm afraid of dogs knew that she had fear on her. Right. So we are praying under our breath. Like, we pray for you. You'll be fine. Jesus got you. We're telling this kid we don't even know. So then I hear the Lord say, Jan, because I hear his voice. I wear pearls. We know that they're not real, real. I always have pearl necklace, pearl something, pearl to remind me that Jesus is the pearl of great price. He says, give her, give her your bracelet. I go, okay. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't want, I always want to keep it. I like my bracelet. So I, I take my bracelet off. She might have been seven or eight. I didn't know how she received it. Some random person is old giving her a bracelet. You should have seen her smile, Jane Ann. See, I gave her hope. I said, Jesus is with you. You have to praise us. He's a pearl of great price. He's with you. It changed everything. We had already prayed. I'm saying this not because like, I'm so awesome because I almost never yeah, want to give away right. the shoes, the bracelet. I want to keep it all for myself. I'm human and I'm trying to walk with Jesus. So right. it was a, a word to bring hope. They brought me the life ring to get me to the swimming pool. I gave her the bracelet. And you know what, Jen? Every day we have opportunities. You do, I do, and these women and men out there have opportunities to to be Jesus to someone, to give them hope. Like you said, a letter may come, a woman may mm-hmm. speak to you. This is when hope comes. Like she said also in the Old Testament, there was no Bible to read. They had to just depend on what they knew from well, from the Torah, of course, but they're on new territory always. We are only on new territory, walking on the water. When God calls us to do something mm-hmm. we haven't done before, but there's someone mm-hmm. there before you that has done it. That's why we, yep. we pray to the saints and also why we ask other people that are much more mature, to, what do I do? So, Jan, that's my story of hope. we got to close it down soon. Do you have any other Bible characters you want to mention that had to do something unbelievable? I mean, I know Mary did. Mary had to have a lot of hope, Mary. Uh, yeah, okay. I do want to say just one thing, and that would be um, just one thing. I said a lot of things. But anyway, <laughs> love, love the the <laughs> um, Paul, the Apostle Paul, and we talked about this on another episode, okay. but that I want to talk about how the uh, the disciples had to relate to him after he had his conversion. That's right. You know, yeah. as Christians, I think, you know, in this time of, of, all things going on with our, it's not just here in America, it's all over the world. You know, don't, uh, don't look negatively on someone who may be just coming into the Lord, even if they're like a celebrity mm-hmm. and, or even if it's, you know, somebody that's well known or, or maybe even not. I mean, just, you know, just know that when they're new in the Lord, they need encouragement, but don't, bring them down, you know, and, uh, right. Because I think about, I think about Paul and I think about the disciples cause they were, he was a Christian, he killed Christians. I mean, he <laughs> killed you know, Stephen. And then all of a sudden he has this conversion. I'm sure they were like, yeah, right. Okay. He had a conversion. Well, I don't see it in him now. I mean, you know, but he became a great, you know, uh, a disciple and he wrote, you know, uh, a majority of the new Testament. So, um, you know, let's, let's keep that word in our hearts as well. I think, you know, uh, and, um, I think that's, yeah, that was what I would just probably want to end with. Okay. Just to remember I'm going to give you the last word because I was going to tell my last word. I, I'm glad you mentioned Paul 
This week, I lost a contact, but it was the only casualty of the weekend because no one got hurt. I mean, 30 some odd people, no one got hurt. No one got argued with each other and no one got their feelings hurt, which is always a, a rare yeah. thing. I always oh, yeah. a bunch of women and men, but um, I happened to lose a contact. Now, I know my husband likes to eat before I tell him something like, Pat, I lost a contact. You see if it's in my eyeball. So I thought it was like at the corner of my eye and I'm like going, I went in Amanda's house and it's, it's made for giants and I'm little. So I climbed on this little bench at the vanity and tried to look at the mirror. And I was a sight to be seen while they're all eating. I'm doing that. And so I finally get Pat and he looks in my eyes, a physician. He says, the contact's out there. I go, baby, last time we did this, the contact was there. I lost it. It's probably there. So I asked him my second opinion. I'm phenomenal for a second opinion. And I get um, Tomoka, who's a dentist. Tyler goes, let Tomoka look because she's a dentist. So she looks, it's not there. And so Tyler being the wise old owl, he goes like this. So where, where was it when you lost? I go, I was over there by the food and the bench waiting on dad to eat because, you know, I don't want to bother him. And so he goes, he walks directly towards the, the place where I sat. I didn't tell him which seat I sat in. He looks down. He goes, here's your contact. <laughs> the unfortunate oh, part. Oh, wow. It was a miracle. But it was in two pieces. Like, I couldn't put it back my eyes. So I walked around half blind like this all week. See, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I can't see this time. I'm 2200 vision. But that's how Paul was. See, he was. Yes. He, was, he knew God. He was half blind. And I go, I go, wow. It, it feels so odd, Jan. If you're a, a contact or eyeglass person, you walk around blind for a while. That's how some of the people are. And when they're mm -hmm. babies, they're getting like one contact in. They can see, we can't always see clearly. We see through a, a glass. And one day we see it clearly. The more we know Jesus and his voice, uh -huh. the more we can spot his voice and say, that was the Lord for me. And how'd you know? Well, he talks all the time. <laughs> He's right. out there trying to go like, hey, I'm the on lights. You know, please catch this one, Ellen, because he doesn't want us to fall in the pit. He doesn't want us to go the wrong way. He's a daddy that wants to carry us for a baby, Hold her hand when we're two. And then one day, see us walk on the water. Do you know what he's doing when we walk on the water? He's applauding. Like when I see my adult children parenting their children. When I see my adult children loving each other after all the years of trying to build sibling love, you know, I see awesome. applaud like he's doing for us. So ladies, this is my final word before Jan can close us out on how to get a hold of her and what she wants to say to some of the show. This is my sum up. Please, please get to know Jesus. When mm -hmm. you have the faith in your heart from this, from a little girl, you remember some things. And one day you embrace the faith for yourself. It gives you hope because you know that all you learned is actually real. I remember the day I was like, it's all true. You know, he's alive. And so do that and keep letting that faith grow. And when you need hope, either go to a faith on the shelf, a journal, a friend. The mass always makes me come alive and you're in the mm -hmm. or preach. Or go to someone that you don't have to answer, a spiritual director, and you have a friend, a, a, like a group of caring friends that you could get around. Sometimes when you're down, Jane, you don't feel like going to Bible study. I just wrote a Bible study while wow, mom is out of covenant books. You don't feel like going when you're down. That's the right. time to go. That'll yeah. give you hope. So hope makes your faith float. Here we go, Jane. You sum it up good. and say how to get you. That's good. Okay, you can reach me at um, www.dimeadozenmom.com. And um, that's that's where I you can find me, and I'm also on Facebook as well. And what do you think to stop the show? Hope makes the faith float. Yes, yes. All and and I, I would say my recommendation is really just get in the Word. And even if you've never read the Word, just say a little prayer like Jesus, help me to understand. Holy Spirit, help me to just to read something that can help me today. You know, just cry out to the Lord and ask him, even if you've never read the word, just pick it up and begin, just start, start somewhere today. So I think, you know, because that is the beginning of your hope. Just start, just start. Don't have to be perfect. Don't have to have all the answers, but Jesus wants to touch your heart. You know, this is kind of like the age of explosion of the faith. I mean, everyone that does believe, I pray that they will speak out now. I write for, oh, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> Maybe I talk too much. I am my. I write for Catholic Mom. That's another link, another safety net, another life vest for you. Get on mm -hmm. the float that's going to float your faith because really Catholic Mom has many writers, including Bishop Aaron and all the different women that take a different angle. My faith is now, I'm more of a contemplative. I, I do a lot of quiet prayer. I pray in the night of an intercessor. I'm not like at a charismatic group anymore. I have grown to a place where I want to hear God for myself and to walk with others that are mature in the Lord. It's a very important place and I want to feed the babies. So it's a very important time to read like Catholic Mom. There's also um 
Dynamic Catholic is one of my favorites. Matthew Kelly. There's so many lifelines, so many vests that if you can't stay afloat on the one and it's making you drown, then go for another one and, and yeah. then surround yourself with other caring women. Read, get my book too. Well, mom, if you go to Covenant Books Inc., you go to Amazon, you'll see what it's all about. Because when women get together, they mm-hmm. stir the faith with each other. That's what Jay and I do on the show. We don't have somebody like, don't care. If someone watches our show. We're trying to get it out there, but we're stirring the faith. We know we are. So pass this on. All the other shows are on YouTube, and you can reach me at Catholic Mom, Augusta Chronicle, or it's Ellen, wow, Ellen at yahoo.com. And that is the first time I got that right. So may God bless your, may the hope in your life rise up, may the faith in your life rise up, hope to go through the hard times, and faith to pass on to others. Read that word, and when you see it in your heart, if it's not for you, it may be for another. So thank you for joining us at Wow Mom. It's Ellen Mongan, and there's Jane Ann. See you later, Jan. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you so much, Ellen. I enjoyed it. I really did. It was a great show. I'm hoping to get it. I'm hoping to get it off the air now. With all technical <laughs> I'm hoping and praying. May God bless us both as we travel. Thank you. I gotta find us, and here we are. <laughs>